my dear fellow citizens my heartiest greetings to all of you on our 77th independence day it is a glorious and auspicious occasion for all of us i am overjoyed to see that festivity is in the air it is a matter of delight as well as pride for us to see how everyone children youth and the elderly in cities and villages everywhere in india are excited and preparing to celebrate this festival of our freedom the people have been celebrating azadi ka amrit mahotsav with great enthusiasm independence day celebrations also remind me of my childhood days we could not contain our excitement of participating in the independence day celebrations in our village school when the tricolor was hosted we felt an electrifying energy pass through us with our harsh pull of patriotic pride we salute the national flag and sang the national anthem so it's were distributed and patriotic songs were sung which kept playing in our minds for many days i was fortunate in having an opportunity to relive these experiences when i became a school teacher when you grow up we may not remain as expressive of our joy as children are but i am sure that the intensity of the patriotic feelings associated with the celebration of national festival is not diminished at all independence day reminds us that we are not merely individuals but we are part of a great community of people it happens to be the biggest and the greatest community of its kind it is the community of the citizen of the world largest democracy what we celebrate on independence day is the fact that we are part of a great democracy each of us has many identities apart from caste creed language and region we are also identified with our families and professions but there is one identity that is above all that is our identity as citizens of india each one of us is an equal citizen each one of us has an equal opportunity equal rights and equal duties in this land but it was not always so india is the mother of democracy and since ancient times we had democratic institutions functioning at the grassroots but long years of colonial rule wiped them out on 15th august 1947 the nation woke up to a new dawn we not only own freedom from foreign rule but also the freedom to rewrite our destiny with our independence began the era of foreign rulers withdrawing from many colonies and colonialism drew close to its end what is special about our freedom struggle is not only the fact that its objective was achieved but also how it was fought under the leadership of mahatma gandhi and a galaxy of extraordinary visionary leaders our national movement was animated by a unique set of ideals gandhi ji and other rekindled the soul of india and helped the nation rediscover its civilizational values following indian signing example truth and non violence the cornerstone of our resistance has been successfully employed in many political struggles around the world on the independence day i join my fellow citizens in paying grateful tribute to the known and unknown freedom fighters whose sacrifices have made it possible for india to regain its rightful place in the community of nations great women freedom fighters like matangini hajra and kanakolata borua laid down their lives for bharat mata ma kasturaba mesh the father of the nation mahatma gandhi every step of the way on the difficult path of satyagraha 
many great women leaders like Sarojini Naidu, Amu Shavinathan, Rama Devi, Oruna Asabali, and Sucheta Kriplani had set inspiring ideals for all future generations of women to serve the nation and the society with self-confidence. Today, women are contributing extensively in every field of development and service to the country and are enhancing the nation's pride. Today, our women have made their special place in many such fields in which their participation was unimaginable a few decades ago. I am happy to note that the economic empowerment of women is being given special focus in our country. Economic empowerment strengthens the position of women in the family and society. I urge all fellow citizens to give priority to women empowerment. I would like our sisters and daughters to overcome challenges with courage and move ahead in life. Development of women was among the ideals of our freedom struggle. Dear citizens, Independence Day is an occasion to reconnect with our history. It is also an occasion to assess our present and reflect about our way forward. Looking at the present, we see that India has not only regained its rightful place on the world stage, but it has also enhanced its standing in the international order. During my visits and interactions with the members of the Indian diaspora, I have observed a new confidence in the India story. India is playing a crucial role in promoting developmental and humanitarian goals around the world. It has also assumed leadership of international forum, especially the presidency of G20. As the G20 represents two-thirds of the world population, this is a unique opportunity to help shape global discourse in the right direction. With the G20 presidency, India can nudge decision-making in trade and finance towards equitable progress. Beyond trade and finance matters of human development too are on the agenda. There are many global issues that concern all humanity and are not limited by geographical boundaries. I am confident that with India's proven leadership in dealing with global issues, member nations will be able to advance effective action on these fronts. What is notable in India's presidency of G20 is the way this diplomatic activity has been taken to the grassroots. There has been a first of its kind campaign to encourage people's participation. It is delightful to see for example, students enthusiastically participating in diverse contexts organized in schools and colleges touching upon the themes of G20. All the citizens are enthusiastic about events related to G20. Dear fellow citizens, this enthusiasm along with a sense of empowerment is possible because the nation has been taking great strides on all fronts. India's economy has proven to be not only resilient during turbulent times, but is also a beacon of hope for others. The world economy is passing through a delicate stage as the pandemic has been followed by international events that have added to the air of uncertainty. Yet, the government has been able to navigate the stormy waters very well. India has converted challenges into opportunities and has recorded high GDP growth. Our Annadatta farmers have contributed significantly to our economic growth. The nation feels indebted to them. Inflation at the global level remains a cause for worry. But in India, 
द गवर्नमेंट एंड द रिजर्विंग हैव मैनेज टू कंटेन इट द गवर्नमेंट हैज सक्सीडेड इन प्रोटेक्टिंग द कॉमन पीपल फ्रॉम हाई इनफ्लेशन वाइल ऑल्सो प्रोवाइडिंग ए मोर एक्सटेंसिव सिक्योरिटी कवर टू द पुअर द वर्ल्ड लुक्स ऑफ टू इंडिया फॉर ग्लोबल इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ द कंटिन्यूड इकोनॉमिक प्रोग्रेस इज ड्रीवेन बाय ए टू प्रोंगड स्ट्रेटेजी ऑन दी वन हैंड देयर इज ए सस्टेंट पुश टू अनलिस द फोर्सेस ऑफ इंटरप्राइज बाय मेकिंग इट इजियर टू डू बिजनेस एंड जेनेरेट जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज ऑन द अदर प्रोएक्टिव एंड एक्सपांडेड वेलफेयर इनिशिएटिव्स फॉर द नीडी हैव बीन टेकन इन वेरियस डोमेन्स गिविन प्रायोरिटी टू द डिप्राइव्ड रिमेन्स द फोकस ऑफ आवर पॉलिसीज एंड एक्शंस दैट हैव लिफ्टेड ए लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पीपल आउट ऑफ पॉवर्टी इन द लास्ट डिकेट सिमिलरली दे आर एट स्पेसिफिक प्रोग्राम्स टू इम्प्रूव द कंडीशंस ऑफ ट्राइवल्स एंड एनकरेज देम टू जॉइन द जर्नी ऑफ प्रोग्रेस आई अपील टू आवर ट्राइवल ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स टू एनरीच देयर ट्रेडिशंस वाइल एम्ब्रेसिंग मॉडर्निटी आई एम हैप्पी टू नोट दैट एलोंग विथ इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट कंसर्न हैव ऑल्सो बीन एकॉर्डेड हाई प्रायोरिटी हैविंग बीन ए टीचर ऑल्सो आई हैव रियलाइज दैट एजुकेशन इज द ग्रेटेस्ट टूल ऑफ सोशल एम्पावरमेंट The National Education Policy of 2020 has started making a difference. From my interactions with students as well as educationists at various levels, I gather that the learning process has become more flexible. The visionary policy, which aims to merge ancient values with modern skills, will bring in unprecedented changes in the education sectors over the years. leading to a great transformation of the nation india's economic progress is powered by the dreams of its people particularly the young generation for whom limitless opportunities have opened up from startups to sports our youth have explored new horizons of excellence the aspirations of the new india have infinite dimensions The Indian Space Research Organisation keeps scaling new heights and setting higher benchmarks of excellence. This year, ISRO launched Chandrayaan-3 and its lander named Vikram and its rover named Pragya are slated to land on the moon in the next few days. It will be a proud moment for all of us and I look forward to it. But the mission to the moon is only a stepping stone for our future space programs we have to go far ahead for their work in space and also on earth our scientists and technologists are bringing laurels to the country to foster the spirit of research innovation and entrepreneurship the government is setting up the anusandhan national research foundations with an amount of rupees 50000 crore for next 5 years the foundation will seed grow and promote research and development in our colleges universities and research institutions dear citizens for us science or knowledge are not ends in themselves but are a means for the betterment of all the people one area that merits urgent attention of scientists and policy makers all over the world is climate change we have faced numerous extreme weather events in recent years parts of india have faced extraordinary floods at the same time there are places facing drought these events are also attributed to the phenomenon of global warming therefore it is necessary to make efforts at the local national and global levels for the environment in this context it is not or the that we have achieved unprecedented goals in the field of renewable energy india is providing leadership to the international solar alliance 
our country is playing a leading role in fulfilling international commitments. We have given the mantra of life, that is lifestyle for environment to the global community. Dear fellow citizens, extreme weather events affect all, but their impact is far more severe on the poor and the marginalized cities and hilly terrains specially need to be made more resilient. The larger point here is that the culture of greed takes the world away from nature. We now realize the dire need to return to our roots. I know that there are still many tribal communities who live very close to nature and in harmony with it. Their values and lifestyle offer invaluable lessons for climate action. The secret of the survival of the tribal communities through ages can be summarized in a one word. That single word is empathy. They have empathy for all Mother Nature's fellow children, flora and fauna alike. Sometimes, however, the world seems to be suffering from a deficit of empathy. But history shows that such periods are only aberrations, and kindness is in our fundamental nature. It is my experience that women have empathy in greater measure, and they show the way when humanity goes astray. Our country has entered Amrit Kal with new resolutions, and we are moving forward towards making India an inclusive and developed nation by the year 2047. Let us all take a pledge to perform our fundamental duty to strive towards excellence in all sphere of individual and collective activity so that the nation constantly rises to higher levels of endeavor and achievement. Dear fellow citizens, our constitution is our guiding document. Its preamble contains the ideals of our freedom struggle. Let us move forward with the spirit of harmony and brotherhood to realize the dreams of our nation builders. On the eve of Independence Day, I once again extend my greetings to you all, especially to our soldiers guiding the borders, joans of the forces, and the police providing internal security, and to the members of our diaspora living in every part of the world. I convey my best wishes to you all. Thank you. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat.